Buenos días a todos y todas. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sebastián Villamizar Santa Maria. I'm the speaker for this session, and I'm going to talk about the U.S. 2020 census, or the lack thereof of it, um, and some socioeconomic trends, um, and voting data that I think would be very interesting for all of us here in this room as we are in the Hispanic Summit. So first of all, I wanted to thank the organizers. We are all human. Thank you for this space. Thank you, everyone, for being here. And let's jump ahead. So the first thing I want to oops, show here is um, that the Latino population in the U.S. has been growing significantly in the past couple of decades, um, whereas the African American community, or yeah, was the m biggest majority or minority, sorry, in the U.S., uh, the Latino population has been growing significantly. So you see here in this graph um, that there's actually a shift, right? Whereas the green line that is the African Americans um, are kind of growing but in a very steady line, uh, the Latino population in red is growing exponentially. And now we surpass them. So now we're now up to 30 million, oh, sorry, 60 million people. We are in, according to the last census, 62 something. Um, and this is something very significant for the US because none of this has happened before. Um, and here, if you take a look at the percentages, it's, this growth is even starker. So you see the green line is still African Americans. It's still very kind of flat, right? Even though the population has increased, it's very flat. But the Latino population in red has grown both exponentially in numbers, in absolute numbers from you know, 7 million to 62 million, but also from 6.5% of people in 1980s to 18.7% in 2020. That's a big shift. That's a lot of people. And we've been growing so much in this country but we don't know exactly what are the socioeconomic trends of this. And that's a shame because the census would have told us that. Um, so <laughs> this is something that is very important to say because the census data has had so many problems, the 2020 census data, because of Trump's attacks on how to gather the data, on collecting the data. Uh, there was a pandemic going on, so a lot of people were not filling out the census. There were many issues with it. Um, and the Census Bureau Office decided to delay the release of the data. Uh, and the American Community Survey, which is another kind of like an attached um, survey to the census that would give us socioeconomic groups. So it would tell us education levels, income, uh, occupation, all of these very interesting stuff. We don't have them yet. Uh, there's also a delay. They said they were going to show it in sometime in March 2022 for the 2020 data. So we only have numbers of how many people there are here. But we do have something that I think is very interesting, and it's voting data. Um, the census released that data from, well, you see here, from 1992 to 2020, so all the presidential elections. And this is something that I think would be very interesting, just thinking of uh, what Claudia was saying earlier, that we're underrepresented and undercounted, but we also don't know really how can we make change in this. And one of the first things that we can do change with is voting, for those who are eligible to vote. Obviously, I'm not, <laughs> but um, others in the room might be. Um, and that's very important because the Latino, again, population is growing so much. There are many people who have been born here, who have been naturalized citizens, and they can vote. And um, we, as I will show here, we don't have a lot of influence in this. So the first thing that um, I want to say is that this is the first time in history that almost more than 60% of Latinos are registered, um, I'm sorry, are um, yeah, registered voters in the US, uh, and the participation is more than 50% in all the presidential elections. This is the first time that this happens, and that's very significant because we are voting, right? We are trying to get some influence out there in our representatives and who is getting there. Um, and so 30 million people can vote. As you can see here, uh, the black line uh, is the total electorate of citizens 18 years and older. Um, in, I'm sorry, 21 years, so that's a mistake here. Um, and in, in just the Latino population. So we go from eight, 6 million people to 30 million people, as I mentioned. Um, and the red line is registered voters. So that means people who just, you know, went there and said, well, yes, I can vote and I want to vote, right? Um, and the green line is people who actually voted. And those differences are very stark and very significant. So while there's 30, people, 30 million people eligible to vote, only 18, a little bit more than half, actually registered. And of those, 16 million people um, actually voted. So that gap 
between the black and red, uh, and red line and the green line is something that we should work on because that means that um, there are many people who can do it but are not doing it. So um, here with this graph, I want to show you this, this is the same data but as a percentage. Uh, in here, we see that the, elector the Latino electorate in the US is now 13% of the total electorate of the US. Um, that's a big number <laughs> that, that can influence and swing many votes in many states. Um, and, but out of those 13%, only 10% voted. Again, there's a, just a gap of how many people actually can do it and how many people did do it. But another interesting part, fact here is that, as you see here, um, this is growing. There is not a single year that there hasn't been less Latinos eligible to vote or actually voting. So that's very significant. Um, another thing that I want to say here is that um, this is the Latino as percentages of the U.S. electorate. Uh, oh no, this is the same one that I showed. Um, here, uh, don't stay too much in this graph, but uh, here what, is, uh, what this is saying is that people are voting more. This is the difference between 2016 and 2020, both highly contentious elections, very politicized, very, impo very important for what happened in the pandemic, right? Um, and here we see that 29% of people who voted in 26, or oh, more than 29% of people who voted in 2016 voted in 2020. So that means that there are people interested in the elections, right? People are trying to make some change through their votes. And the other numbers are not that, that um, the, well, the growth is not that big, but still it's significant. Here, uh, this is the most, kind of weird graph of all of them because you see all of the lines were growing up. This one is a little like jagged like this. Um, and what this says here is that people, um, there is a fluctuation in the registration. So even though some people are registered, not everyone registers for the elections. And that's something that organizers can tackle, right? We can think of how to make this registration happen in other states and in other places that it's not easy. But uh, this is the most, again, like crooked one of all of them, but still there is a big increase of 61% of people who are, have been registered. Now, uh, with this one, I want to show you the percentage of actual, the people who voted. And again, um, almost all those who were registered to vote, voted. This is what, uh, so remember, one thing is being eligible to vote. That was the last graph. This is registered votes. And of those who are registered, almost 90% of people voted. That's also very important because not a lot of groups have those uh, participation rates. And the last thing I want to say here uh, is, this is the last graph I'll show you, um, that even though we have a very small gap between registration and participation, right, those who can vote actually vote, um, that's still about half of the population who can actually vote. Of all the eligible Latinos to vote, uh, only 53% of people did in the 2020 census. Um, and that's very important because uh, we don't have the, those slides here, but Republican votes in, among the Latino population in majority Latino counties increased much more than Democratic votes. So 53% of people who voted Republican uh, in 2020 uh, were, okay, okay, so 53% more of people who voted Republican in 2016 voted uh, Republican in 2020, whereas Democrats was only a 29% increase. So that means that uh, there's something about the Republican candidates and rhetoric that is appealing to certain Latinos in certain communities in the South, in Texas, in California, and in New Mexico and others that are there. But still, Democrats are you know, bigger than, than Republicans in the Latino votes. But again, what I want to say here, just to end this, is that only half of the population in the US, in the Latinos in the US, are actually voting who can vote. So what does this mean for Latino or Hispanic leadership? Well, that's on you all, right? I'm an academic. I don't do, and I say I can vote. Uh, so many of you who can do it or can participate in elections or can make some change in different places in areas, uh, you can take these numbers and try to see well, how can you make your communities vote more? How can you make this political participation actually good and influence the way that we want to live, right? And as, as people were mentioning before, how can we make this something that it's for everyone, not a fragmented Latino community, but for everyone who are like who is part of this and who are living through this 
uh, well, pandemic and everything else, uh, and how can we stimulate the voting for, um, to make these changes happen. So thank you.